with just three days remaining in his presidency. President Trump's impeachment trial in the U.S. Senate will take place after he leaves office. And time is running out for him to issue pardons, including a possible self-pardon. A short time ago, I spoke with constitutional law professor David Schultz about these and other issues. And joining us right now is Professor David Schultz. Uh, good morning and thank you so much for your time this morning. My pleasure. Thanks to the audience. All right. Let's talk about this trial that's going to occur of Donald Trump in the U.S. Senate. There are some Republicans who are saying, what's the point? Well, the point is a couple of different things. If you're, for many people, it's still punishing the president for allegations that he incited an insurrection or a riot, and they really want to make a point, whether that's just what impeaching him twice so he goes down as the only president in history impeached twice, or I think the hope is on one level that he actually does get convicted. And if he does get convicted, and remember, it takes a two thirds vote to convict the president, even if the trial occurs after he leaves office, the Senate could still then impose as a punishment that he would be barred from serving for any federal office, including the presidency, for the rest of his life. And that may be one of the uh, other goals that is aimed to be achieved by doing this. And, and it, at this point, it really does look like it's going to happen after he leaves office. Let me ask you about that point about removing or barring him from running for office again, because I did see an interview with Lawrence Tribe, who's a well-known uh, Harvard law professor, who says he's been contacted by Democrats in the Senate who are looking to try and see if they can actually bar Trump from running for office without convicting him. I understand that would not be a two-thirds vote. That would be a 50-50 vote or majority vote. Yeah. Uh, I, I've heard rumors about that also, but I think at the end of the day, uh, this would really sort of undermine the, the clear language of the Constitution that provides for uh, removal of the President of the United States, um, again, upon conviction, and then the language seems, seems to suggest that he could be um, um, prevented from running again. Um, and the idea of saying that you could do that, prevent the President from, from running again by a majority vote when the impeachment and conviction process requires two-thirds, well, why even bother do an impeachment and do a a, um, a trial? Why not just have what a majority vote of the House and a majority vote of the Senate to ban, to ban the president from running again? So, so, so I, you're you're I'm you're sure. on the side of he needs to be convicted by the Senate. Something that's never happened before for a, a, a well, has it happened for a former president or a sitting president? Never, never, never. Yeah. I mean, okay. the only that conviction been... in the Senate is what's never happened before. Yeah, we've had convictions in the Senate for other individuals, such as federal judges, but we've never had a conviction for a president or an ex-president of the United States. So even if Trump were still in office and there were a conviction, this this would be historic in terms of what would happen next. But now to say that the, the trial takes place after he left office and he's convicted and then they're going to try to bar him from running again, we're starting to deal with a lot of constitutional questions that we've never had to confront before in American history. But again, the idea of saying that Congress could just by what a majority vote say you're not fit to be president of the United States and throw them out would go against the clear language of the Constitution okay. that specifies the impeachment process. All right. And just quickly, do you think they're going to get 17 Republicans? It's got to be 67 senators to convict 17 Republicans they'd need. It all depends on what the state of the Republican Party looks like in the Senate, because I can clearly see people such as Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, uh, Mitt Romney voting to convict. But you're right, you have to get a lot more. And this is going to be a battle over what? What does the Republican Party want to be beyond Trump being his president? And if they want to purge him from the party, then I can see the votes occurring. But if it's still a very divided party, then they're not going to get those two thirds. Quickly now, the issue of pardons. He's got three days left in office. He's got to do it while he's still president. Can he, and do you think he will, pardon himself and his family members? I'm pretty sure he's going to pardon his family members. Is he going to pardon himself? It's a possibility, but first, to pardon himself, he'd have to acknowledge that what? He's essentially done something wrong, and I don't think the president believes he's done anything wrong. Now, but even if he were to pardon himself, mostly mainstream legal scholars in the country, constitutional scholars, 
believe that the president does not have the authority to pardon himself uh, and that if he were to do that and then prosecuted let's say by the justice department for something this would be a case that would go all the way up to the supreme court and again most of us think that the supreme court would not let him do that okay and pardoning he can pardon his family members for crimes they haven't been charged with Correct, yeah. We knew back when, when Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon, Nixon hadn't been indicted yet, hadn't been convicted of a crime, and Gerald Ford okay. pardoned him, and the, and the courts upheld it. So the president has broad leeway to pardon people who are commit, have committed a federal crime or may have committed a federal crime. Notice I say federal. It does not extend to states. Okay. And Donald Trump is fake. Investigations in Georgia and in New York. Well, Professor David Schultz, so many questions uh, about all this. We certainly appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much.